Hey everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Build with Tanya. We actually have a different segment on this evening. We have a guest who is coming in with us by the name of Ms. Sheila Leggett. I'll be introducing her, you know, as we move forward. Um, just making sure I could see her. Okay, yes, I do see her on the back end of our broadcast. So how's everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing well. I am super excited about my guest that's coming on. Um, just absolutely amazing entrepreneur. I'm gonna tell you guys a little more about who she is and how she serves in so many arenas in the marketplace. And we're also going to talk about brand and business building. So make sure you stay on throughout the entire broadcast. Um, when we're like coming towards the end, I'm gonna give you guys some tips on building your business and building your brand. If this is your first time in a live broadcast with me, for one, we're using a new platform. Well, relatively new. Uh, to many of you, it may be new. It's gonna ask you for permission. And they're not asking for your social or all your information or anything of that nature. They just want you to give them permission so that you can comment during our live. If you have questions, business and branding questions or questions you'd like to ask our guests, make sure that you give StreamYard permission to post for you on Facebook. So that way your comments and things will show up. I can see them. Um, we're on Periscope. And I did both of my personal pages. I usually do YouTube, but I did both of my personal pages. Uh, because my guests and I are connected there with many mutual friends on that particular page. And I thought it'd be great to give uh, many of them an opportunity to get to know her on another level. She's well known in her community, uh, but interviews normally give us an opportunity to really learn people from the inside out. And I, for one, know that branding is an inside job. It's, it's really about um, who we are on the inside. And, and then we really figure out who we are as a brand. I don't think, you know, the branding aspect comes first until we we started identifying um, who we are. It's actually one of the things I teach my clients and that's brand clarity. So we're gonna talk about um, branding and business building tonight. If it's your first time in a live training with me, say hello in the comments, let me know where you're from, what type of business you own, how do you serve in the marketplace? How do people get to experience your gifts? Secondly, if it's not your first time, right? This is not your first time at the rodeo. Put hash <clears throat> hashtag renew in the comments. And I'm asking you to put hashtag renew because renew is the name of my consulting business. And it's renew full circle, meaning we get our whole life. We renew every single aspect and area of our life. I believe that entrepreneurship is probably the quickest way to begin learning about who you are. How many of you would agree? Put yes in the comments. Like you learn so much about your personality, your wants, your desires um, on your entrepreneurial journey. And so over here, we get our whole life. So put hashtag renew. And thirdly, um, and this is for those of you who've been on with me before, maybe you're a client or not. Um, this is your first time. There's a button somewhere on the platform that you're on, especially those of you on Facebook, I know it's on the left. It says share and something magic happens when you press it. It allows you to share out with someone else on your timeline who is interested in growing their business and their brand. I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. I'm excited about this um, because branding is my baby. Um, I teach branding but not uh, the normal branding that you may see online where people are talking about your websites, your photos, and your pretty pictures. I don't consider that branding at all. I consider it an extension of your brand, but branding is an in inside job, right? It happens from the inside. And many entrepreneurs struggle to create their brands because they lack clarity about where their branding actually starts. So you guys are going to get a kind of behind the scenes look at some of the things I do to help uh, my clients, which are women in business, just like you. I help them create businesses that fund their lifestyle and not run their lifestyle. I am going to, um, before we get too far into our interview, I wanna share seven, a seven step growth strategy with you all. 
over time working with numerous entrepreneurs and my own entrepreneurial journey, I find that there are seven growth steps that we look at when we're building our brands and our businesses. And as I'm calling them out, you can also decide like where you feel you are in the process. So first of all, most people start out as self-employed, right? Most people start out as self-employed and somebody can scribe this in the comments. That would be amazing. Um, but most of us start out as self-employed. That's when we kind of like just working for ourselves. We do everything, right? And then the next step is when we learn to lead ourselves. Now, you guys tell me if this sounds familiar to you, this seven-step growth track. If you hear where you're at or maybe some of this has been your experience, put me in the comments. Thirdly, this is the third step. After we uh, you know, kind of move from that self-employment stage, we learn to lead ourselves. The next thing we do is we grow our business, right? Because there's a difference in being self-employed and growing a business. I'll break this down next week. I'm going to do a broadcast and I'm really going to break all of this down. But it's important because you'll hear this, um, these steps and these concepts as I'm interviewing my client and as we're talking about branding and business building towards the end of this broadcast. The next step is hiring a team. So in order to grow the business and not be overwhelmed and consumed, most people hire a team, whether it's a personal assistant in the beginning, a VA, somebody to help them. Your children, did you all know, and I'm not a, an accountant, so I just want to tell you all that. It's a disclaimer. But you, if you are afraid to hire people at some point, you can hire your children and it's still a tax write-off. Now, check with your accountant, right? And you can write off up to $600. Um, without having to begin taking taxes off of them. So for those of you who are super afraid, start with your kids and you can keep the money in the household, right? But check with your accountant. I'm not a certified accountant. That's just a tip for you all. So next we hire a team and then we learn to lead the business. So if you notice, I said we learn to lead ourselves first and then we learn to lead the business and then we grow our wealth through systems and then we step into entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is really when you begin having businesses that are working for you, right? And sometimes we make the grave mistake of creating 10 streams of income, but none of them are really providing, like not one of those sources could provide for our business and our family completely and fully, and we become overwhelmed. So those are just seven growth steps I wanna share with you all. I want you all to think about what, what part of that process you're in. You'll probably hear different steps as I'm interviewing my client, and then it will relate to what we're going to talk about a little later. So let me tell you guys about this amazing uh, young lady that you guys are going to be introduced to, to tonight and her brand. I'm just blown away by the whole thing. Anyway, so at the very beginning, and I love this part um, of her bio. It says the key to realizing a dream is to focus not on success, but significance. Listen, if you have not followed me before, um, one of the things that I talk about all the time is purpose, right? So many times we find ourselves doing things that don't have anything to do with where we're heading, where we want our life to be. Um, and now we're in business to make money, right? Everybody's in business to make money. Your business should be profiting. But sometimes when money is the only goal, we lose focus. And so I was, you know, when I read this part of her bio, um, you know, I just thought it was amazing. And it says, and then even the small steps and little victories along your path will take on greater meaning. And that's a quote she has in her bio by Oprah Winfrey. Now we know Oprah drops them, right? But this was amazing. The key to realizing a dream is to focus not on success, but significance. I love that. So Sheila is a self-made entrepreneur with a giving heart that precedes her wherever she goes. Now, I know her personally from being in, I'm no longer in that um, general area, but in the community where she has her businesses. And um, she's definitely a giver, definitely a giver. I, can, I remember um, I hosted an event and uh, she donated right? She just donated to my, it was a free event. And she called me and asked me to come by and pick up a check for her, just a donation to support the event. So I know firsthand she is a giver. I normally attract givers. Um, I think giving is a huge part of prosperity and growth. And um, it also helps you to build a great business. But it says she currently owns 
um, and successfully runs nine businesses. Somebody put nine in the comments. I'm going to put nine. <laughs> nine in the comments. Nine businesses, guys. We're going to get into it tonight. Nine businesses. I'm going to go ahead and read her bio. <laughs> She currently owns um, nine businesses. As a licensed cosmetologist, she opened her first hair salon, Chaffee's, in 1993 and changed the name to New Look Hair Salon in 2002. She opened New Look Mobile Detailing in 2003, New Look Barbershop, New Look Bounce and Party Outdoor Rental in 2007, New Look Indoor Bounce and Party in 2013, the New Look Business Center, New Look Game and Party in 2017, and finally, New Look Lashes 2020. And so New Look Lashes is how, you know, we connected during this particular season. And that's the brand that we're going to focus on the most this evening as, you know, we're sharing with you. Sheila has been a mystery to some and a blessing to others because she is the... Um, con she is an adventurer. Her high regard for diversity has gained her the respect of influential people in high places. Her entrepreneurial savvy has made her a favored employer and created numerous jobs in our turbulent economy. Sheila and businesses have received, Sheila and her businesses have received recognitions, Southern Star Award, Minority Business Year, Business of the Year 2015 through 17, Most Charitable Business, there's the giving part again, um, Salon of the Year, Living Legend Award, ECU Alumni Association, March of Dimes Cert Certificate of Appreciation, um, York Memorial AME Zion Church Certificate of Appreciation, uh, Women of, Woman of the Year. She's currently president of the Greenville chapter of uh, I Am Beautiful, the movement. And in addition, she is the president of the town of Winterville, North Carolina's Community Impact Program, a member of Winterville Chamber of Commerce, and the founder of New Look Steppers. Listen, entrepreneur. This is definitely entrepreneur type stuff, guys. I can't wait for you guys to, to meet Sheila. She also is an author and wrote a book, I and You, in 2016. And she's prepare, preparing to launch her new life and business seminar. Amazing. Sheila is married to Alfonso and has one son, Jalen, and a goddaughter, Messiah. Now we're going to bring on my guest. I'm super, super excited. Let's see if we can get her on the screen here. Add to screen. Yes, we are in business. It's working. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, okay. The first, I want to say thank you for agreeing to bless my audience. Thank right. you. No, thank you for that. Yes. Okay. I feel honored. <laughs> <laughs> so normally when I'm talking to people, one of the first questions I like to ask them is, what did you want to be when you were a little girl? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so funny. When I was a little girl, I was a tomboy. Um, no hair, no makeup, no none of that. And I have a cousin that talks to me now, and she's like, I cannot believe you're doing hair and all this stuff like this. I, I just wanted to be like my dad at the time. My dad owned a business, and he was the first African American to have a boat factory. And I was like, man, I want to be like my dad. I want to be an entrepreneur. But I thought in the back of my mind, but it was not really locked in, but I wanted to do something amazing like my dad. Oh, beautiful. And the reason I always ask this question is because I believe that our life leaves us clues. And for those of you who may be a little uncertain about, you know, what is my assignment? What is my call in this season? There's usually something that connects you to some area in your past that lights the way for, you know, where you should head in your journey or where you even are now. And when you get really, really clear on that, everything kind of starts making sense. And I have not had a guest that I've asked that question who their answer hasn't kind of connected with either the path that they took or the path that they're on um, at this given time. So Sheila, even though you know that 
entrepreneurship was something that you wanted to do. Did you really understand entrepreneurship at that time? Or was it more like just owning a business to you? Because we know that entrepreneurship is several businesses. It's normally having their hands in several businesses. So was your dad, did he have several um, businesses other than the boating company? Or did you see him running more than one company? It was just one company. Um, I was kind of hands on. But it was like, man, I mean, I enjoy it because I'm like, I can go to work when I want to. I can sleep late. I can. So I thought it was cool because, you know, sometimes I would go in and he wouldn't be there and I could call him and he'd see home. I'm like, so this is what only your business. But later I found out that wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that some of that, you know, is true. And if you notice, even our work together, my goal is always to help my clients gain more freedom like your dad had. So maybe that was just time he had put in where he could, you know, actually have that time to be at home or, or stay in a little late because that is part of the perks that comes after a while, right? So yeah. how did your work in the salon um, lead to all of the other things that you're doing now? So you started off as a licensed cosmetologist and you know a hairstylist how did that lead to all of the other aspects and businesses that you currently own well it was like i love hair i still love hair now i still do hair. but it was like do i want to be behind the chair the rest of my life and it was like i wanted to go places i want to do things and it was Every day, it seemed like something was missing, like something was missing for me. What did I like to do? Was, was this what I wanted? So it was like I just started. And then I tell people, then I met my soulmate. I always say I met my soulmate, somebody that could help me and wanted to do the things that I wanted to do and had the same dreams. And when I met that mate and he was down to do like I wanted, it was like it just kept going. Mm-hmm. Huge. That's so huge because um, my heart is for women and just my personal experience with not so good relationships in the past. I understand that they impact your destiny so much. And I believe that when we really get clear on what we want to do and that person comes along, everything in life explodes for the better. You know, it just goes really well. Um, studies show that relationships are 85% of our excess, success. Would you agree that relationships impact, you know, how we do business and how we do life? Oh, yes, yes. Because before when I was doing a hair salon, um, the person that I was dating at the time, we had like the auto restyling and, you know, different things like that. But the relationship wasn't good. And I can see with the fellow relationship, the business failed because mm. if you're not happy, your business is happy. That's why I look at it because it was like, you know, you had to have little arguments at work, you had them before work. And we try not to take it to work with us, but you take it to work with you. And it's like when the relationship was failing, the business was failing. Oh, gosh, that is so powerful. So I truly believe that our personal life rolls over into our business is one of the reasons at Renew Full Circle that we get our whole life, because I know from personal experience that no matter how we want to cover the things that are uncomfortable in our lives as entrepreneurs and business owners, it eventually rolls over into the business. Yes. And so, um, hearing you say that is just like a big aha again for me. Uh, because it's so real. It's it's just so real how things going on behind the scenes, you know, impact our life. Now, let's move into um, the brand that we're talking about tonight, which is your newest brand, um, New Look Lashes and Glasses. So how did this business form? How, you know, where did this idea come from for you? This was like an impact on me. I don't wear lashes a lot, but when I go out of town, when me and my husband go out of town for different anniversaries and stuff like that, I normally get lashes put on. And it's like I'll be so cute when I'm traveling. And then when <laughs> we get there, take a shower, lay down. When I get up the next day, I always call it a drunk eye. I have one lash <laughs> up and the other one down. 
And I just kept saying, man, and we went on a cruise, and it, this is so funny. He called the people in when I was out for breakfast. He was like, you know, it's some insects in the shower. But actually, <laughs> I mean, that time, and they fell off. You know, it had the little bead at the end and the two little wings. Ah! And I was like, oh, my God, those are my lashes. So I was tired of that. So <laughs> I told my husband, we got home last year, last year around this time. I said, I got to find something. <laughs> and I just start working. I just start working on it. I talked to a friend. I'm like, where do I start? And he was like, hey, start the hair show. So I started the hair show and I started asking around, asking around. And somebody introduced me to a chemist. And that's where it started. It took me almost 10, 11 months. But I poured my heart and my soul in it because I wanted to be right before I introduced it to my family, friends, and the world. And so you actually launched this during a pandemic. Yes. Like most people were um, really concerned about their finances and, you know, what was going to become of the business that they already had. But you, on the other hand, decided to launch this during a pandemic. And how has it been going for you? Uh, breathtaking. <laughs> I mean, it's doing better than I ever thought it would. You know, my husband, he was like, oh, it's going to do good. It's going to do good. And I'm like, I always be like a little nervous, like, what if, what if? But I had different launch days. I thought I was ready in February um, and it didn't work out right. And I thought, I said, hey, I'm going to do April. And then that's when everything hit. And I'm kind of glad because it gave me more time to work on the product and perfect it. When I thought it was ready, it really wasn't ready. So... And, and and keeping it a secret. I tell people, I know we want to do <laughs> time, but the only people that knew was my husband, my sister, and my cousin. And I know they were ready for me to launch it because it was like cries and, and fussing and upset. I'm through. I'm not going to do this. And it was just all of that. You know, nobody's not going to buy it. And it's like, and and then I'm like, this well, how do you do it? My husband like just launch it on Facebook. I'm like, I can't because I like to do it different. So I'm like, I do a business reveal. People have a baby reveal. Why can't I do a business reveal? And nobody never thought I would do lashes. No, I even said I'm gonna do a, a giveaway. If anybody can think of what business I'm launching. You I know, saw I that on your page. There were so many guessing, I even guessed. You know, there were so many people guessing what it would be and nobody, you know, mentioned that. But I thought as from a branding and marketing perspective, I thought having a business reveal was um, creative. It was original. Um, and I think it, the timing was absolutely perfect because we were on this time frame where nobody had been out. Nobody could be around anybody. And the, the world was kind of like opening back up and people were ready you know, all those social distancing and, you know, the mask and everything were at hand, they, they were ready. I think the time was, was amazing and you just did an absolutely amazing job at marketing it and putting it to the forefront. And guys, you know, I believe in jumping. Now, I don't believe in not being prepared. If you listen, she prepared for months, uh, you know, researching and talking to chemists and things of that nature. But at some point, this. <laughs> Be prepared, right? But at some point, you have to jump. And I, I also know to, what I know to be is one of the things that we often worry about as entrepreneurs is the how, right? But the how normally comes after you take that first step. And so, when you launched, what opportunity came just kind of like came available to you because you had stepped out there? As, as it related to um, the lashes. I'm hoping you can connect with me on what I'm asking here. Um, it was just like, I mean, even my launch, I'm like, well, okay. I didn't prepare myself for that. I only had like, I'm just gonna put these lashes up here as a display so people can see them. And I mean, I almost sold, literally almost sold out. And I was like holding back the tears, I'm like, like, these people are buying. We're in a pandemic. I didn't think people, you know, and it just, and not even, that was the 28th. And I think about four days later, I have an opportunity to open in the mall. And I'm like, the mall? And I immediately said, I want everybody to do it. And I immediately told my husband, I'm scared. He's like, everybody here, you tell everybody to do it, do it, do it. And you're scared. <laughs> so I'm like, 
okay. And, you know, I did everything to try to make myself say no. They would say, I'm discount this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I'm like, okay. And then finally I said, all right, I do it. I step out. And my husband's birthday was coming up um, on the left, on the 10th. So I had three days. I wanted to surprise him and, and open it up on it. So I opened up June the 8th. June the 28th was my business reveal. And I opened my doors of my last thing in the mall on July the 10th. So, so guys, I wanted her to share that with you all because I think it's so important that we take the first move. I believe that as we really get in alignment with what, what we're called to do and what we believe in, the next thing just presents itself. It just, you know, it just appears. You don't have all of the answers originally in the beginning. You usually know your, your next move. And so with all of um, what's transpiring, what was it, what do you think the, one of the reasons is that you market it well? but this is a product for women. What do you think it is about the lashes that you offer as opposed to any other lashes? Because lashes have been kind of going around for quite some time. What is the difference in the lashes that you offer? And it has to be serving some type of problem that the women had prior because it's, um, it's just doing extremely well. What do you think it is? Um, the difference in, in the lashes that you have and just regular lashes? Um, to me, um, I, like I said, I don't wear lashes all the time. And I'm not bashing anybody that does the other type of lashes to strip with glue. But my issue was glue. I don't wear them all the time. So if I wear them, I usually have it just for an event or for a weekend and I want to take them off. And those were the issues that I was having. So when I, you know, start doing the magnet thing, I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. And you just put the adhesive up there, put the lash up there, you wear them. When you're finished with them, you take them off, put them in the storage kit, and you can get over. I have a pair, um, the pair actually that I'm wearing, that's why I put these on. They're my dream lashes. I wore them over 50 times. But oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Repeat that. I wore these right here over 50 times. And what I tell people when they buy them, you can wear them up to 30. So I try to wear them so I can tell my, you know, I like to be the, the example of my product. I like to test, to test and tune. And then I can say, hey, this is what my product can do. I won't say, Ann told me this is what the product would do. I know what to do because I did, you know, I'm looking at my book. I'm like, no, this is not working. That's wrong, boy. The Lord bless this pair of lashes. Um, man, <laughs> I'm like, they too sticky. Here's all my notes where I took when I was working on my lashes. So if somebody has to say, Sheila, did you really do this? I can bring all my paperwork, all my notes. This book is up, and I can say, hey, I didn't just look this up on the internet and said, I'm going to go with this company and put my name on it. I put my heart on my soul. And I have my regular lashes now. That was an issue. I would get the individual ones or the strip ones. And when I take, no matter what I did to take them off the correct way, it still took my lashes off. And my lashes are really thin, as well as my eyebrows. And they're a light color because my natural hair color is a sandy red, a number four, a four to a six. And so when I lose them, it takes so long to grow them back. And actually wearing these lashes, my lashes have grown. Wow. How many women, I'm just curious, are lash wearers who are on the broadcast and who have experienced, you know, their lashes coming out with the, the previous, the strip lashes or the individuals that they worn before and them taking a long time. I actually saw a post on Facebook just a few days ago where someone was proposing the question and saying, that so many women were experiencing, we're going to call it hair loss because that's what it is, but it was, you know, their eyelashes were um, thinning or coming out because they had been wearing them. Has, have any of you um, experienced that? So many of you are- And I have a client that, that she has to wear lashes oh, wow. now because she wow. has hair. And, I, and, and you know, during my heart is a lady came and she had been doing chemo and she lost all her lashes. And 
I gave her the sun up to sundown, which is very active. And when I put them on, it was just like she had her natural lashes. And she sent me pictures all the time. And she just loved them. And like I said, I tested them myself. I had in my little notes where I had some. And they were itching my eyes. I'm like, uh-uh, we got to go back. So I'm, I'm allergic to a lot of stuff. My eyes, I wear glasses. My eyes get irritated a lot. So I use my product. And I know this product is really good. And it won't eat your eyes. And I tell people they're, they're good on your eyes. They're easy on your eyes. They don't hurt you at all. Oh, beautiful. So my guests are probably saying, okay, well, she has nine businesses and she marketed like crazy, but you said that she was your client. So she is a client of mine, guys, and they're probably wondering, like, what does she need? <laughs> a business code. What, where, what does she need help with? So what made you decide to get coaching? Uh, Sheila, with all of the successes you know that you've had in in this particular round, what made you decide to get coaching? As my grandmother would say, old dogs do need new tricks. <laughs> but it was just I, I love what I'm doing, and I was just so overwhelmed. And it was going, I didn't know it was going to go move so fast. So I'm like, uh, and you always, huh? So, <laughs> so I'm like, I, have power. I need some help to get my, my life on track because most of my businesses kind of run itself. And it's, it's what I had to be more hands on. I had to, you know, make sure I trained the girls right. I had to, and, and, and pretty sales. So I had to make sure everything was nice and neat and pretty all the time. And, and even myself, because now that I'm selling lashes, my husband's like, hey, you got to, um, Right. Right. <laughs> and I don't feel like it every day. And the main day I don't feel like it, that's when somebody said, hey, you made to do the lashes. You the lash lady. <laughs> well, I always have a pair of my pocket somewhere. But um, I need help to try to get my life on track with this, with this business. So <laughs> my retirement business. <laughs> Say that again. Say that again. <laughs> I can retire and relax. Mm-hmm. So what what I want to bring to light for you all is because I, I work with a lot of women who are successful. So they are already making money. Some of them have multiple revenue streams. Some some women don't when they start working with me. But one of the things that I do is I help them to form systems for their business so that their business works for them and they're not working for the business. Does that make sense for any of you all? And so one of the things that I'm so um, pleased that we have been able to um, align with Sheila's vision was her having an assistant. And I want to talk about this because as women, and I'm, I'm actually I'm spending time with my mom, right? And my mom's an entrepreneur as well. And she is struggling, y'all, to let people help her, okay? Even with just things around the house because she accustomed to her routine and I'll do it and this is how I do it and you know I'm just smiling in the background I'm still doing stuff you know for her making the load easy and she'll realize when I'm not here you know what maybe I should you know get somebody to do this but one of the things I find as women is we do struggle to delegate we struggle to get help and as entrepreneurs especially um, guys we can hustle our way to six figures how many of you know we can hustle our way to six figures? That's that's not really as hard as most people think, um, but sustaining it, you know, having the energy to sustain it, having the time freedom with our family, um, having the revenue still come in and the business still flow is normally where most ambitious women um, like Sheila and probably many of you come in. And so what we're doing is putting systems in Sheila's business so that it's you know, it's just going to be like a well oil machine just working for itself and she can really be the visionary. So I want you guys to just imagine <clears throat> we're putting systems in place for this business. She was already on visionary level prior to this. Like, I can't even imagine the empire that she's going to build with more time freedom. I'm trying to keep her from doing as much, right? But I believe that when we have peace of mind and we have more time freedom, we make even better decisions um, in our business. So how has uh, the work that we've done so far, Sheila, 
how has that helped you? And I, I'm asking you this part because I want to encourage people to get help, right? If if they need it, even if they're earning great revenue and they have things going on, um, it just helps, you know, to have some type of assistance, you know, in our business and in our life. How has it helped you uh, so far, Sheila? It has helped me a lot. I can breathe. I'm, I'm working on this assistant thing, you know, it, that's just the hardest, you know, the trust thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting there, but you have helped me a lot. My husband can tell, he's like, I can tell, he can tell a difference since we've been talking, you've been coaching me, a big difference. And you oh, even yeah. help, helping him out some. <laughs> I'm getting my Mondays. <laughs> Listen, um, I believe that, I, I don't believe that God intended for us to work by the sweat of our brow. And many of us um, have been taught when we want to earn more, we have to work more. But, you know, even God rested, right? I be- This is my take on entrepreneurship. I believe that our business is a vehicle for us to do our assignments in the world, whether yours is to be a philanthropist and you want to be a big giver or you want to do things for your family. I believe that's what our business is for, not for it to overwhelm us and consume us. And so many of the things that I do in working with women is help them create systems, whether it's hiring systems. So we create visions for what you want your staff to look like. Um, We create the plan, the the hiring plan. And I'm so glad that Sheila mentioned trust. How many of you um, feel that you hesitate to hire or delegate because of trust? You know, I share with you all that much of the early part of our life rolls over into our business. And so many of the trust issues we have as women, myself included, right? I owned a brick and mortar and had to hire people. And I had trust issues at first, right? Um, But how many of you are actually allowing trust or your lack of trust to keep you from growing your business? I I can't see the the comments. if, if you guys are making them, but I'll come back afterwards and, and respond. Sheila, is there one or two things? Let's see. I think her broadcast, it says, okay, let me add her back on. Okay. okay I got you back, ma'am. Um, is there one or two things that you want to say about your, your last business one? Tell them where you're located. Um, you know, how your product helps them, how they can obtain your product. And then can you leave our audience with um, some advice as far as business, you know, is concerned? Let them know about your business more um, first. Okay. Um, we, it's new lashes and glasses. And it's so funny with the glasses. Um and my husband was like, you know, a lot of women like to wear glasses and I wear glasses. These are prescription glasses. And that's another thing I did with my lashes. I had to go back in and get them to put a little more curve in it. So if you wear glasses, everybody that wear glasses, you can wear wow. your lashes with your glasses. Most lashes is going to bump your glasses. So that's when we I went in and had to try to create glasses. You can wear it with your lashes. I had all different kinds, and I had to connect with the company. Then they put our logo. If you can see it here, our logo is on all of our glasses. So when you wear it, it's going to say um, New Look. It has, can you see it up there? New Look G for glasses. So you can rock our glasses, and we have all of our um, cases. This is your carrying case. You get your magnetic liner your lashes, and this is a storage kit, and you also, it comes with a mirror. So if you're driving down the road, you pop your lashes on, pulling up to the grocery store, you see, oh, there's Mr. Wright, and you want to pop that thing on real fast, you can. But we're located here in Greenville, in the um, mall, Greenville Mall, um, 714 Southeast Greenville Boulevard. We're in a kiosk right across from GNC store and Jimmy Jazz. Can they order online? Yes. Um, our website is newlooklashes.com. And you, you can go right up there. They have all, we have 10 different um, styles now. And I'm working on some more stuff um, also right now as we speak to add to it. Um, 
my thing I always tell everybody about business plan is if you want something that is going to work, you got to find something that you love to do, that you love to do with all your heart, that if you had to do it for free, you would still do it. Um, a lot of us, we focus on what somebody else do. Mm-hmm. And because we see them make money out of off of it, we try to do what they do. But I always tell people, I can't tread in anybody else's water because if you don't know that product, you don't know how to do it, it's going to be hard for you to master it if you're trying to master somebody else's dream. It's hard to bring somebody else's dream. And never be afraid to, if, if, you're, if you're in love with something, if Tan has a problem, something going on, and that's my dream, too, don't be afraid to start it. Because she's going to attract a certain kind of clientele, and you probably attract another kind of clientele. And you guys may join together. Just like when I owned my bounce business, I, I went to every company that owned the bounce place, and I asked them, How much do you rent your bounce for? I don't want to be competition. I want us to stay the same. And those places, ASAP and Party Maker, they helped grow us to where we are because they, we all came together. It wasn't competing, we were not. Yes. We helped each other and we grew and just like now. They call me hey, out of a blue or can you give me one? And it can't always be about money. You should be able to help one of your fellow um entrepreneurs without wanting money. Because sometimes it's not all of all about money, it's building a relationship. Absolutely. And if it's something you want to do, I tell people step out on faith. When I start thinking about always be having enough money. I pray and I ask the Lord and if the door open just a little bit and give me some wiggle room, I'm going to go in there because I'm not going to be 80, 90 years old on the porch with my husband so I wish I had done that. I'm going to do it and fail before I sit back and don't do it. So don't be afraid of failure. A lot of people are afraid of failure. I'm afraid of not trying. Oh, me too. You fail, then you start back over. And you say, okay, this is what I failed at. So this time I need to do this, this, and this. And don't be afraid to ask for help. But be careful who you ask. Woo, that's really, really good. Um, you guys should have gotten some great nuggets. Everything that she said is, is so true. Um, authenticity, brand clarity. I heard all of those things just really getting clear about who you are and who you are as a brand. So many people are doing things that they don't love. So many people are in businesses doing things that they don't love. Um, And what this normally looks like is someone who switches lanes often, like they don't stick with it. It doesn't last because internally, that's not who they were. That's not what their assignment or their call was, or they had a love for. And you got to have a love for it in order to master it because you're going to get you know, you're going to have things that will go wrong that if you aren't connected to it in that way, you'll just, you'll say, never mind, I'll do something else. So that's one of the reasons I feel. Or you're going to see a lot of, um, I'm relaunching or I yeah. took a break or Every- this. I love what I do. I never take a break and you should not have to relaunch. You know, if, if you booing, you should be, hey, I'm, I'm going to change my logo. I'm going to, you know, do this. I'm going to do that. But how do you relaunch? I, I, I haven't figured it out yet. You just can add to. Uh, have another grand opening. How can you grand open what you already have? You see, I think that what happens, I believe in reinvention. And I'll give you guys an example so that you guys will know the difference in what Sheila is sharing with you and maybe you transitioning from one thing to to the next. So I owned a brick and mortar service based business for 10 years. Reinvention is me becoming a full time consultant and coach in 2012. But it really was an extension of what had started transpiring for me within my brick and mortar business. I believe they just kind of things add to each other, right? Um, And it's so true when we're having to relaunch all the time and rebrand all the time, it's usually because we lack clarity about what it is that we're really assigned for or what's really in alignment with who we are. And I blame social media just a little bit for that because there's so many 
amazing people doing amazing things. And we have so many examples in front of us, guys. Y'all raise your hands. I mean, we have so many people doing amazing things on social media. And if you aren't clear about who you are, and if you don't have a, your own vision, it's easy you know, to see someone and say, oh, you know, I'll do that and then become frustrated. So it's really and they prematurely launch, you know, they social media, social media, it, they see this person opening this person. They was like, oh my God, I want to get my fame. I want to get my, and they prematurely launch before they are actually ready. I've seen people launch a business and they don't even have their product in yet. And they have to, you know, put something on the table and say, this is what I'm going to be selling, you know, when my product come in. Or you only have one of them and you have or two. So you have people there and they can't buy your product. It's okay to wait. Now, there's a thing called pre-launching for those of you who might be coaches, teachers or trainers. Mm -hmm. And you've already created your outline or you've already, you know, created your outline for your book. And you know your book is coming out. Those are different from what you know Sheila is sharing. She's just talking about being completely unprepared and then all of these what ifs happen and then you actually never see it. You know, you, you actually never see the item or it's one and done. And so just being really clear about, um, I believe in having a vision, right? I, I believe we talked about those seven, um, <clears throat> seven step growth strategy. And the first one was, you know, self-employment. We're, we're normally in that self-employment stage. And it's at that stage that a successful person normally gets a vision. And a vision is a lot further out than where you are now. And most people don't have that. So that's why we're, you know, kind of trying things. I wanted to highlight um, one of the other things that your lashes offer. And what I, it's everything that Sheila is doing within the brand is in alignment with what I feel, you know, you should do to uh, grow your business. And, you know, maybe I've spoken that, maybe that's why she connected, but um, Sheila's uh, lash technicians have to go to training first. Is that correct? Sheila? Correct. And so I believe in training. I believe one of the reasons why most of our businesses may not get as far as they need to, why we sometimes struggle with staff um, with satisfying the customer or even building a, a consistent brand is because our staff lacks training. Now, I remember when I first started hiring, like within my first year, I used to say, these people don't want to work. You know, it just felt like I was hiring all the wrong people, but I needed to learn to hire differently, which meant I had to get myself in a position where I had time to train people, where I had created a training program. So one of the things Sheila and I worked on was, you know, how she was going to have a consistent system for her training program, right? Um, another thing her business does is wholesale. There are terms to her wholesale. She's not, the wholesalers have to be trained. So all of these things help you guys stay consistent with your brand. Does that make sense to you guys, right? And so she reserves the right to say yes or no to who she allows to, you know, wholesale her product because she believes in it. You know, she wants people who are in alignment with it, who are going to be integral, who are going to be in flow with the brand that she's creating. And I'm mentioning that to you all because we're talking about brand building. And that's exactly, you know, what she's doing. She's building a consistent brand across the board. When you experience the new look lashes, there should be consistency across the board um, with the lashes. Is that what your aim was with, um, you know, wanting to offer the training for your your technicians and things, Sheila? Yes, because your staff is only as good as you are and what you pour into them. And sometimes I had the problem with leaving my staff with another staff to train them. And in hopes, you know, I know I told them what to do, but right. I still let them do that. But I give them a separate class. What we do now, and I, I make them feel good. I serve them food, and, and we have fun. And I actually go through the training. We just had one about two Mondays ago, and I hired uh, 
a caterer to come out and serve them breakfast. And, and we did classes. We had paperwork. You know, it was like a little class. And each person went up and practiced how to put them on. And, you know, they was nervous because I was there. But I'm like, you can't be nervous. But you got to pull what you want into them. They don't really know what to do unless you explain it to them. Because I have a problem with, like, it makes sense. You should know. But everybody don't think on the same level. Absolutely. And so one of one of my favorite um, phrases that I tell my clients is document everything. And so, you know, what Sheila and I do is create systems that she doesn't have to repeat herself over and over and over again. She'll have workbooks for her, you know, her training pr programs that are specific to her business. Right. And so some people may be saying, well, they're telling it all. But no, you don't know the, the unique system behind it. But those are the things to building a brand. Like she has training programs. Her staff has her train. Her lash techs have workbooks for the training. All these things are systems we've put in place so that one. Um, remember, we're building businesses that fund our lifestyle, not run our lifestyle, right? And so when we create systems, we don't have to keep repeating the process. When she trains her staff thoroughly, hey, Stacy, hey, Kim, how are you? Nikita, I don't know if you're still with us. Hello. And I know you guys can't comment. I'm looking from uh, my phone to this other uh, Facebook page here, but good evening, ladies. And so systems are so important, guys, if you want to leverage and grow your business. There's going to come a time where more work is not going to be the answer for your business. Right. It's going to be a space where you're going to have to hire a team and you're going to have to have some systems in place where you're the visionary and you're managing the systems and not so hands on, you know, in the business. Now, Sheila, you've kind of taken on a new role over this time frame. Um, and I know because you're real ambitious and you work a lot. Uh, how the adjustment going for you because it's an adjustment for you to say okay i'm taking my hands off a little bit i'm a shift role <laughs> how is that working for you yeah i'll be panicky every day but i gotta get you know back and i try to stay away as much as i can and, <clears throat> and let them handle it but it's scary I, i'm taking your advice i'm, I'm staying away I'm, I'm letting them do it i have all the paperwork, everything for them to follow, and it's nerve wracking when you used to be hand. I'm just used to being hands on on everything. Um, when you've gotten burnt before somebody in your business, it's it's hard for me to trust. You know, with them with finances and and doing this, and and you're thinking they're in one place, and so I have a good little crew now. You know, um, and I tell people I love them when they have no experience. And, and I hate to be like that because they had no experience. A lot of them were like high school students and they're easy to train. They're Trainable easy. and teachable. Um, and, and they're awesome and they, they just love it. I mean, they're like my family. And, and I know I'm gonna be it's easier for me to break away. I mean, I've been able, I, I took my Mondays Beautiful. You got to the Tuesday part yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. And actually, I took my Tuesday of this week to start working on Christmas coming. So you got to start with my lashes. I got to start working on different kind of things for my Christmas stuff. So it's, I feel comfortable not calling and not popping up and, and stuff like that. And they'll say, why do you keep popping up? Like, okay, I'm not popping up anymore. So, and I guess they're on their toes now because they never know when it'll pop up. But absolutely. It's and all the stuff that you told me to do, it was hard. I was telling you I was going to do it, but um, I was saying I can't do it. But I really relaxed and start doing some of the things you told me to do. And and make it, make it better. I can have more time with my husband. They really not panic about work, worrying about if it, they're doing this right, but I can focus more on. I love it. I should have came to you a long time ago. <laughs> it's all good. Look, the timing is absolutely perfect. I um, I think one of the reasons why it's easier to trust. And you tell me if you feel this way, but this was my experience, is when you have systems. 
because systems leave things for you to be able to check, right? It's when we kind of like maybe give instructions, but they don't have like a guide, right? But yep. we've created guides and, you know, policies and <clears throat> procedures and workbooks and uh, daily task lists, you know, all the things that we uh, work on for your business. It's easier to trust because you left, you know, a system other than just, you know, when we sometimes expect people to just kind of remember, but they're probably even more comfortable because they have something they can look back on. They have yeah, just what she said. I got a little confused and I got my pamphlet and I looked at it and I, you know, and, and, you know, everything, little things that I thought they should know. And then I, and I tell people, give them a bonus. Let your workers know that you appreciate them. So I give them bonuses now and, and they just, they enjoy it. They love it. Beautiful. Beautiful. So guys, <clears throat> when, when we're talking about creating systems, I want you guys to understand that this is your vision. Like you are the hero in this. I'm just a guide. And so how I come in is just providing you a system that's going to be unique to your business, but you got to do the work. You got to fill it in. Like Sheila, although I may give her the guide for a workbook, she knows what's going to be in the workbook. I don't know how she trains her staff or what she needs in it. So it's still your vision. And so many people are afraid, you know, that when they do get help, whether it's an assistant right or whether it's a coach that they're kind of losing something in their business but but you're really not guys it's always your vision and i'm either helping you get clear on it or um helping you to put those systems in place that are aligned with your business a lot of times uh when we when we think about branding because branding is a big buzzword right so we get logos you know we get a website we go take photos and, you know, we feel we have a brand, but, you know, Sheila is, you know, really diving deep on building the brand for New Look Lashes because there's going to be consistency with her workers, with her customer experience, um, even those who wholesale her product. It's, it's lined out in her, you know, wholesaling contracts, what's expected and things of that nature. That's a brand. So it's just like Chick-fil-A when we think about Chick-fil-A. I don't care what city you go in, nine times out of ten, there is a strong consistency in the staff, the food, everything, right? It's because they have those systems and because they have training, right? Um, you rarely see the owner at that place because they're working on the vision. And so um, that's what Sheila and I are doing, getting to the place where you know, she's just really the visionary and all of these amazing ideas like the one she had before. Um, man, she can just explode with those ideas because of the time freedom that she's going to have. Now, some of you may think, well, will she make more less money? We haven't talked about, you know, where what has happened financially from, you know, um, over the last month or so. But I am willing to bet that even more revenue has been made because you can think more clearly. Am I correct, Sheila? Yes. <laughs> and that was one of the things I'm like, I don't want to hire anybody. I want, you know, that's going to be more money. Another more. cost. Mm -hmm. But um, it's costing me less because I don't have to go to the doctor now <laughs> from being stressed out. So you got to look at it. it it's, it's a little more money, but it's a peace of mind. And you got to think about this, guys, when when I teach my clients about hiring and hiring strategies, we're not hiring people to spend money on them. You, they are an investment. So you have to figure out how is this person going to earn the money that I'm actually paying them and some. Right. So you want to think from a three X three X perspective, whatever you're paying this person, they should make you at minimum three times, ten times what you're actually paying them. And so many people hire people to do a task instead of looking at the person as an investment into the business. And that's why they're afraid to move to that next level of, of hiring. And some of the fear is, you know, we don't know how to hire, but that's what I'm here for, guys, um, to help you ease that. I really want to see more people step into new levels of freedom, right? Because we can have 10 businesses, but if we have no time freedom, if we lack time with our family, if, you know, we, we can't really vacate unless, you know, we're doing business stuff, how much of a life, you know, do we really have? 
So Sheila, I'm so grateful that, you know, it's working for you. Sheila and I are working together some more, but she, the strategy that God has given me for her, my gosh, guys, you <laughs> understand. I'm about to pop over here, right? But I knew, you know, it was important that she align with what we had already talked about so that she can have the freedom for the next thing. Um, Sheila, I am so grateful that you you came on, you left everybody with some words of wisdom. Um, a couple things I wanna ask you before we close. One, what's your definition of success? Peace and happiness. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tell people a lot of people is success is money. That's not and, and when you get over that part, that's when you start making money in business. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started, it was get rich. Me too. <laughs> and it's not that now. And the money comes. You know, it's just like, but you know, it's kind of like whatever you chase runs away from you, right? But uh, there's a difference when you're in alignment with things. And what most people miss when we think about money is there are things like giving and kindness and compassion and understanding and training. There's so many things that bring the money that we often don't do when we're chasing it, right? We usually yeah. miss a lot of the steps that actually create the value that you know make people want to do business with us or you know make people be attracted to our business and our brand. Um, what is your definition of peace? Hmm. Oh, definition of peace. Peace is family. God. Um, getting to know the Lord more. And that helped me in business. I trust his word. A lot of people just step out on, they call and ask somebody, should I do this? No, I wait for him. I have to get in my quiet space and I have to have my peace mm -hmm. and my peace from God and my family. See my family happy, see my community happy. You know, a lot of people don't understand. Giving back to my community makes me happier more than anything because I know the day that I could not give. And one of the things I told the, asked the Lord a long time ago, put me in a position where I can give. And that's what he had done. And it, you know, when I started out, I couldn't give. And your business will prosper more when you start to give. Mm. When I start to give, I started giving back three, four, five fold. And you just have to give. Beautiful. I'm trying, I'm realizing now, I think I got this. So is that the correct? Website, if not, I can take that one off and, and type it in properly. Yep, newlashes.com. Yep. Okay, so this is <clears throat> the link to Sheila's website. And then I did, I typed in where you are. I thought I did. But let me, I want to show this here though. Guys, you can wear lashes. Over 30 times, over 30 times, guys. Let me put the link back up for those of you who may be. And another point too, Tano, and a lot of people say, hey, I wanna get 10 or 20 businesses and that'll make it, you know, so, but that's not, and, and I had no intent on doing, you know, having so many businesses. And when it's funny when I sit down and somebody asks me what have I done to, today, I get overwhelmed to think about what I've done. But while I'm doing it, it's like it's just easy. But a lot of my businesses run itself. The hair salon, everybody has the code. They can go in, they can do hair, they pay their bills. Um, you know, the bouncy stuff. You know, it's a lot of it runs itself, and a lot of people hold on to all of these businesses just so it'll look pretty, but they're not making them any money. It's okay to let it, and they gotta stop worrying about what people are gonna say. If you have to lose that business, lose it and pick up something else. It may just be in your way. So don't think, hey, Miss Sheila got nine businesses. I'm gonna go get me nine. But you want nine businesses? Just that's gonna bring money in. Absolutely. I one of the concepts I teach my clients is simplification. Because if I look at your business and you got to be at all of them, 
you know, in order to make it happen, then you wear yourself out completely, right? So I believe in building a business to the point where it runs for itself and then creating something else, right? And what most people do is they do like seven different things and none of them have the capacity to take care of their family or even to cover the bills for the business alone. And so guys, simplification is, is the thing. Find something that's going to, this is my motto, right? Um, and when I'm working with my clients who haven't hit six figures yet, I always suggest that we get this thing to earn at least six figures first. You guys hear me? And I have several clients that I've gotten to the six figure mark. And I have several clients like Sheila who are already at the six figure mark who come to me for strategies and systems to scale their businesses, to get more time freedom and um, for hiring and training and things like that. But I tell people, get the business to the point if you have a skill set so remember we talked about the seven steps um the seven step growth strategy and self-employment was the first one this is when you're doing everything you're doing all the things right it's you and you and you and you're doing you're the marketer you're the vendor you're the front desk person you're the provider um what are some other tasks you're the accountant you're doing it all normally in that first stage of um, self-employment. The next stage is leading yourself. And so most people skip, right? They, they're still doing all the things. Instead of learning to lead their self and what that looks like, it may look like looking at your finances differently, um, developing personally in your emotions, because at some point you're gonna need to hire, right? And if you haven't learned to lead yourself, it's difficult to lead other people. This, I'm just trying to tell you, it's difficult to lead other people until you learn to lead yourself. So these seven, if you follow this guide here, guys, it's going to work. It's going to flow for you. Self-employed, lead yourself, then grow your business. This is normally when you're hiring a team, you're getting some help. And I believe in hiring as soon as possible. I mean, I don't believe you have to have six figures first in order to hire. I believe hiring will for you to get to six figures even quicker. But I say six figures, guys. And for those of you who have read it, it's not a whole, whole lot of money. I mean, you there's a lot going on in life that you could do with six figures. And, <laughs> you know, so I mean, I still want you guys to shoot higher. But I do feel at the point where people are earning six figures, where they're profiting, right? You know, they have some money in that six figure realm. Um, their life changes. They have more freedom. There's less, a little less stress. Um, there is a little less worry about how, how are you going to pay the mortgage or the car, you know, the normal necessity things. When you can get to the point where you built the business um, to the point where those aren't things that you're constantly worrying about, because I believe the, the enemy's uh, biggest plan is to have people in poverty because it keeps you unfocused. You can't focus on the things that you really need to do when you're worrying about how you're going to pay the light bill and how you're going to pay the mortgage. I mean, I've been there. Most of us, most entrepreneurs go through that stage, right? But um, I usually like for my clients to build something that's going to get them to six figures, focus on that, figure out how to go either deeper on that or then create another revenue stream. But even more so at that six figure mark, you can now step into a space of where you're actually teaching that thing that you become an expert at. It, it could be your next level of wealth. Are there any questions for Sheila uh, on this evening from you guys? I saw some hearts on one platform. Um, I'm learning how to work the stream yard thing because I've been posting, right? But I didn't realize that I had to put show up there in order for it to actually show to you guys when people are commenting and um, and things of that nature. Are there any questions from you guys for Sheila this evening? Um, any questions about branding or biz building? Um, maybe you need clarity about where you are in your brand building process. Maybe you're thinking about hiring and you have some questions about hiring in your business. I I use, I use normally, depending on what the business is that my clients have, I normally suggest someone like Sheila who has 
multiple businesses, um, we create a vision for a personal assistant first, right? Someone who could not only help Sheila and her business, but who could help her with personal things as well. We create a, a, a job description for that uh, so that when people come to apply for the position, they know what to expect. Um, we create a hiring strategy and we just talk about what is this person's job going to be. And I say that because when the visionary can get some things off of their plate, and guys, this may be petty to, to some of you all. It may not necessarily petty, but it may not be something that you thought about. A personal assistant can even do things like pick up your dry cleaning, right? So imagine, you know, picking up your dry cleaning uh, once or twice a week takes an hour or two out of your day. I, I normally like for people to think about what is an hour of your time worth, right? What, how much money could you make? And I don't mean, it's not always have to be around money, but we're talking about entrepreneurship and business. So how much money could you earn in, in one hour, right? So um, maybe your coach and maybe your, uh, your call with you is $500, right? And that time frame normally goes for one hour. So does it really make sense that you're running to get dry cleaning, right? When you actually could be making the $500 or the $1,000, whatever you charge per hour for your service, does that really make sense? Is that the best use of, of your time? So one of the things I normally work with my clients with is developing an assistant. So in my business, um, we had several assistants for uh, our business. Uh, we had front desk who actually, if you all have a brick and mortar business, um, we create training programs, all the things so that you can step into a space of, of becoming a visionary. So does anyone have any questions before we leave? Someone can have a question, no questions? That under wraps, this is the time if you have a question. Maybe um, you're like Sheila, Sheila shared to you that trust was an issue that she had with hiring. Do any of you struggle, you know, with trust issues? So, so let me share this with you where I struggled. So my concern when I own my brick and mortar, because we had, I had a clothing boutique um, as well as a service-based, you know, business that we offered. And so I was worried about people stealing and, you know, all the things, because people were saying you probably lose about 20, you can expect to lose about 20%, and this was back then, of um, inventory, different things like that. And I had to do a mindset shift, which is what I want you guys to do tonight, too. So I had to say, if am I going to worry about the 20% I'm going to lose, or am I going to create strategies where I earn so much that 20% is going to be minute? And then I can learn how to put systems in place where that 20% is 10, 5, 4, and a lot of that is in us learning how to hire differently, hiring for care, not necessarily hiring for um, experience. And Sheila talked about that. And that's one of the, I didn't hire for experience over time. I hired for character because people can be trained in almost everything except character. That's God's job, right? And so if there's a skill or something that you're needing someone to do, of course, we would like for someone to have knowledge of um, uh, Microsoft Word or whatever the you know programs you may need, need for computer wise. But if the character is off, none of that make a difference, right? And so when we learn to hire differently, when we even get clear on what we're looking for, one of the things Sheila and I did was work on a vision for the staff, right? So you need a vision for what you want your staff to even look like. What is it, what's super important that, that they have? We work on your personal values as a leader because once we figure out your values, we now know that the people that you bring on board need to be in alignment. And these are things that you look, through, look for in your interview process and things of that nature. You guys didn't have questions, I thought I would drop a, a few things. Um, okay, let's see. Denise says, I struggle with assistants that are not focused on their job. Okay, so um, 
do you, when you hire an assistant, do you, how do you tell them what their job is? You know, what their role is in the business? How do you do that? What's your process for that? I'm going to coach you through this. Um, I, I, I want to say something on that, too. I had that same issue that I'm like, they're not being focused. When I come back, all the stuff that should be done is not done. And that was because I wasn't clear on what I wanted them to do. And a lot of times I didn't even know what needed to be done myself. And I was coming in expecting them to have this, 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 and that done, but I didn't tell them. They don't know, they didn't know that on their ship that they need to keep the mirror clean. They need to sweep. They need to, you know, and I used to come in and say, hey, it, I've been here all day for eight hours or for seven hours and my windows are dirty. And then they would say stuff like, um, Miss Sheila, I didn't know I had to and I'm like, that's common sense. But they, they didn't know. If you don't explain it to them and just say, hey, I'm hiring you to come in and answer the phone, that's what they're going to do. They're going to sit there and they're going to answer the phone. And the trash is going to fill up. The bathroom is going to get nasty. They're going to step over the paper that was there last night when they walked in the front door. The paper was on the floor. They stepped over it and they went. Because they may feel like that's not what they're supposed to do. Maybe she has a janitor. Maybe that's somebody I it wasn't in my job description. So do you remember we created a um not for this business, this was what a couple of years ago, just that one daily task list in one of your other businesses. How did that help? Do you remember that? Sheila? Okay, when when you did the little class for the the um the salon for me? Um, nope. This was like, it was, it was just something I kind of gave you. It was a daily task list. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So how did that help? Because this is kind of similar to what we're talking about now. How that helped a lot because what I actually did went through the day and looked at things that need to be done. I thought needed to be done. And by the way, and even they came back and said, Hey, Miss Sheila, should we add this to the list? Or should we add that to the list? And they even start, because, and I was giving them an opportunity, because I tell them when we have a meeting, I say, tell me what I can do to be a better boss and to make this job work easier and run better for you. And I want them to feel like that, you know, and I tell them this is us. You know, if I don't have you, I can't run. If you don't have me, you don't have a job. So we have to be more of a team than me, your boss. And you you have to make them feel comfortable about their job and give them some responsibility. Because if you don't give them any responsibility, they're not going to take it. And they're, and they're so happy now that I trust them to have the key and to cash out and to drop the money, even though I'm scared, I'm like, oh my God. But, you see, know, but the thing is, you still have a check system behind that. You know what I'm saying? So once, although they are responsible for that, you still have a way to, to check as well. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, I think one, you're just doing absolutely amazing with moving into, you know, letting go and releasing. I yeah. mean, I was like, okay, look, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. <laughs> so, Denise, rent and contract. Let's think about this. Um, now, is that a contract that you maybe give them initially when they start working? Um, and I ask that because I can think about things that I have signed with a company or um, it's written daily. Are you saying that? Um, your contract is written daily, Denise, or are you responding to what she uh, what she and I are talking about? Um, okay, so if you're talking about the daily task list, so one of the systems I help my clients create is a daily task list, and um, their duties are written daily. Okay, um, then what I feel is you may have hired the wrong person. Right? If you're going through your systems as far as um, you know, explaining what their job is. And, and then guys, because a lot of times we know, right? And we kind of assume, like she was saying, that other people know. Sometimes even telling people isn't enough, like walking them through 
the process, right? Um, it's super important. I know for my staff, when I had a brick and mortar business, we had a, a 40 hour training. I did their, the training program I created was 40 hours um, for your business. It might take you two weeks or, or a month to walk through the training with them, depending on what your schedule was and your time for availability. But normally within two weeks, I had walked them through that training program and the training program consisted of them shadowing, you know, someone else who was in that position. It consisted of them role playing um, for that position. And then they also had a quiz. And so the more we train, the more we detail, the more we explain, the less room there is for error. Now, where we struggle as entrepreneurs oftentimes is we're too busy to really properly train. Not saying that that's your particular situation, um, Denise. Yeah, it was mine. <laughs> the people that I work with that come to me, they were too busy to do that before. So we recreate their schedule um, and they don't lose money because we recreate their schedule because I also create a, a, re a way for them to profit more at the same time. And sometimes that doesn't register in our mind when we're used to doing things. Um, but it may be that you're, you're maybe hiring the wrong people. I would suggest that you get really clear on what you expect and what you're looking for. A lot of times I was sharing with you guys when the owner understands what their values are, it's easier to for the company. So the owner has values and then the company should have values. All of these are things that I work with when I'm helping people build their brands. But um, when the owner is clear on that, when they're going through the hiring process, they can see those things, you know, throughout the interview. So I have um, interview questions that help you, you know, hear, you know, what they're saying. We all know that like sometimes after 90 days, the representative lead the room. So the person that you saw in the interview, you like, Lord have mercy. But I specifically have questions that help you to identify more if these people are a, a great fit, you know, for your business. So it could be like, some something in the hiring that's going wrong or um, miscommunication. I, I think it's important that your staff understands your vision for where you want your business to go, what your brand consists of. Like um, if you if you understand your values, maybe one of your values is extreme customer service. So you know when you're talking to um, okay uh, when you're talking to a potential hire you're able to explain to them what's super important to your business. And those who they're not in alignment won't even come back. I, I also did um, more than one interview, right? So I, they would shadow, that was part of their interview process. And so I know all of this seems time consuming, but guys, systems save you time, um, systems save yourself money, time, energy, save yourself time, energy, and money. When you think of systems, save yourself time, energy, and money. So it is the work that we do before the wealth. And it may seem like a lot of work up front, but man, once you have that system, it works like clockwork. You see it in every area of your business. You're less stressed, right? Because of the work you did before the wealth. And so we just got to be willing to kind of move our busyness to the side so that we can put the things in place that are really going to scale our companies and our businesses without us um, being overwhelmed and burned out in the process. This is the point where you go from being the worker in your business, because many of you may not really own a business. You may say that, but you may really just own a job that you created for yourself, right? But once it becomes a business, it is now functioning and running without you having to be hands on um, all the time. And you have to take that time to say, OK, I, I got to cut my schedule and do this right here so that I can have even more time freedom so that my hiring process is not rushed. Right. So that my hiring process is thought through um, when you have systems for hiring, like your interview questions. You're not recreating that every time you need to hire somebody. You just pick up the same interview question that, you know, we've created. Right. And you just do the same thing um, all over again. So Denise says, I think I might have to focus on clarity. A lot of times that's what it is for most of us. 
when we're looking to go to the next level, we, we just need another level of clarity because we kind of want to take our old system into our new season. How many of you have tried to do that before? <laughs> Big major thing that we're building over here, but the system that we had in place before doesn't have the capacity to support it, right? So that could be the way that we were doing things, the way that we were hiring, even our work schedules. I believe many business owners work way too much in their business, right? And so um, if I had, if I was thinking of clarity for you, Denise, I would start with where do I want to see my business in the next five to 10 years, right? So if you think about where you, you know, do you want to still do the same thing that you're doing now five to 10 years from now? That's, that's normally how I propose that question to my clients, because if, if so, then we don't have to change anything, right? But when you think about what you're doing now, do you want to play the same role in your business that you actually play now, right? And if you don't, then we create a vision. Um, one second. Um, if you're a stylist, it is so difficult to find another person to duplicate you. So, um, I don't agree with that. And I don't think the goal is to duplicate you, is to duplicate your system. And where most of us become frustrated is because we're wanting to manage people. But if we manage our systems, so if you have a hiring system that regardless of who sat down and interviewed your person, because you have these systems, right, that you're asking everyone, that's a system, right? And if that person's answers are in alignment with what you desire, that's a system. Um, if you decided to get a manager, she will be making sure people are doing the things within the system, right? And so where the difficulty comes in is you know, us just you know, really deciding um, a system that someone can follow that makes our business run the way it needs to run. And then what does that person look like? Not, you know, look like, but um, character, um, their goals, their desires, those things are important too. Like that's one of the questions on my interview template is, you know, what are your goals and aspirations? Because if their goals are completely out of alignment, right, then they're probably not going to do well in, in your space. Just a lot of things that, um, and then when we think about hiring someone, guys, we got to think like this. Do I really want someone who's just like me? Uh. <laughs> you want to find no. someone who is extremely strong where you're weak. And this is when I talk about leadership and people finding brand clarity. And um, I have a track inside my academy called Design Your Destiny, where we're figuring out who you are. Right? This is where that part comes in, where it's so important. Because when we understand our strengths and our superpowers, we know I need to get to the place in my business where I can just do this thing right here that I'm good at all the time. But my business needs all of these other moving parts. That means I need people or either systems to do all of those other things. The clients do. The clients. I'm not clear. Can you, um, can you restate that? I'm, I'm not clear on what you're saying. The clients, are you saying the clients expect them to be um, just like you? Maybe you're saying that. So is that what you're saying? If, let's just say that's maybe what we're sharing. This is, this is where our leadership comes in. Because so often we get people attached to us and not our brand. Lord have mercy. Hmm. See, we're talking about brand building here, right? And so many of us are building things that require us to be available. But if we create a brand, um, that means that we've created these systems that when everyone comes in our building or in our online space even. So maybe your coach, teacher, trainer, and you, you have other coaches, teachers, or trainers, right? You train them, 
You train them to the culture of your place and the experience. That way, the people aren't so attached to you. They're attached to the brand. And that's right, because I had to get away from that because when I first did the lashes, everybody was like, what day are you going to be there? So you, I, you, And now I have the girls trained and my inbox is blowing up. I don't know who those girls, but they are so well trained. They are awesome. They, I went to buy one thing and I walked away with three things. They just like you. And so it made me feel good that I don't have to be there because I was running myself to death because they <laughs> my hands on them and now the staff can do it yeah that is um makes sense okay great awesome that that is one of the things like in the internet space we talk about personal branding all the time but you guys have to understand i mean there can be a business brand and then a personal brand even with your personal brand you want to create systems you don't want to always have to be the person to do the thing. There are things that go on outside of the your superpower or what you offer to the brand that make the business aspect of the brand work, right? And when we create a real brand, people get attached to the brand. That's just like we go to Chick-fil-A and ask for the owner, right? We don't even know who the owner is to all those different locations, right? Because we've fallen in love with the brand, which is their systems, their training. I have a client, um, whose daughter, it's been years ago, worked for Chick-fil-A, and she was talking about the extensive training program that they went to. Now, it wasn't like um, overwhelming. It was just particular, right? And all everybody went through, whether you, it didn't matter what role you played, you started at a certain point of, of training, and therefore there's consistency you know, across the board. And the people are, when I go to Chick-fil-A, I'm looking for an experience, not a person. And 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 though that was one of my main decisions to open up my neck, my lash part outside of my hair salon, because I could just as well put my lashes in there and let them be sold there. But I wanted to disconnect my not totally disconnect, didn't disconnect myself and my face from the product. And I have sold so much product by not being there. And I mean, because you have some people that just don't want to deal with you they just you know like you know i don't you know and some people be like oh when i get in, around you i get intimidated like, oh, they really don't know me to be intimidated around me but me disconnecting myself from the product and the product totally away from me and have sold the product even more because if they walk into the hair salon the first thing they're going to ask for is me and if i'm not there they're going to turn away and that makes you lose a product but when you have a product at the mall with somebody there with the product consistently all the time, they know that they can get that product every day from 11 to now we open at 8, from 11 to 8. But then if you're in the salon, you might may need some lashes on Monday um, and I'm not open. Or they may need them in the afternoon and I'm only working the morning shift. So it's being able to have access to that product at any time. Mm-hmm. And I'll do more from paying rent in two places, but it hasn't hurt me. It made it even better. Because each one of those has a separate brand and a separate entity, and they can go their own um, direction. But most of us are building businesses that, that require so much of us. You know, it's like if we're not there, we're not making any money. But when we create our visions, one of the visions I knew, like when I opened my brick and mortar, off gate, I was hiring. That wasn't like I, employees, not, you know, contract to help. I'm talking about employees <laughs> um, because I knew what point I was aiming for to be able to move from the business. So I had to, you know, have systems, train people, you know, to do. I remember having, um, I had a recruiter, guys. I'm telling y'all all the stuff that it's really it's my last one right here, but uh, <laughs> um, hopefully it blesses someone. I had recruiters who would call around to the different schools for new hires and training and things like that. So these were people that I paid. Um, they knew and understood what my business was looking for, what our vision was, and they were always looking for talent for us, right? Because I had the expectation to continue growing. 
And I didn't want to be caught out there as we were growing where I didn't have someone who could actually deliver the services. So vision is everything. I talk to you guys about vision and branding all the time, but I'm talking about on another level. Come see your girl. I let your girl. If you are an entrepreneur, maybe you have multiple businesses and you're already hit, hitting well over six figures like Sheila is. And so maybe money might not be an issue for you, but strategy and systems and you know, moving to new levels and scaling your business is what you want to focus on. Um, I'd love for you to uh, connect with me. Let me see if I can find the link to that here. You can um, you can book with me. It's running across the screen. I should have done a shorter link. Uh, for you all, but you all can inbox me if you're not catching that. Um, let me see if it'll let me copy it. Um, but I can help you. Get back to Sheila, um, where do you see New Look Lashes? That's if you don't want to share that, because sometimes you may not want to go too far into what you see for your vision until it's, you know, even moving further. But where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself then? So, so we won't talk about necessarily the company as much as yourself in the next five years. Well, I can talk about both. I see my last company being worldwide because I feel like this, what is for me is for me. If I share it, but I feel it being worldwide, me being more relaxed, um, I can kick back if I want to, Take a vacation day. I don't have to wait and for something to clear up that I can just say, hey, we're going on vacation. We're going to take this week off and the business can run by itself and I don't have to stress. And if I want to turn my phone on, I can. That's what I'm here to be able to turn my be on vacation and turn my phone off and not panic. Well, you're going to be able to do that in less than a month. So I get you. I feel you, but you're saying that's going to be a consistent thing for you in five. But yeah, we, we have um, just a few more months, you know, okay. that's transpiring for you. But I feel you. That's where you want to consistently be at um, um, during that time. That's that's absolutely beautiful. Um, I do agree completely with your um, brand being worldwide. Mm -hmm. Like, wholeheartedly. Um, and that's just not, not because we're up here because Sheila knows that I told, I you know shared um, how in alignment I was with what she has going on and how, what an amazing job she had done in marketing and um, preparing for, you know, her product and um, just excellent. I just see really, really great things. And I'm so grateful and I'm honored that you allow me to support you um, as you continue to scale and grow, I'm honored for that um, opportunity and you would entrust me, you know, to help you uh, with your vision. I think it's beautiful and amazing. And I think you're even more beautiful and amazing just as a person in general. It shows in your business. It shows in your efforts. It shows in what you do in the community. And then God rewards you um, accordingly. So, you know, promotion really comes from God. So. That's that's where uh, it really shows. And so, guys, I'm going to put Sheila's. Um, I'm trying to get high that thing that I got running across there if I can find it. <laughs> OK, and I'm going to put Sheila's. I think I got to go back to comments for that. I'm going to put Sheila's, um, Denise says, thank you, Sheila. You are very welcome. Very nice thing. Awesome. I'm glad you understood that. I hope you got a some more clarity, uh, Denise. I'm trying to find, we don't talk so much. Okay. Here we go. So this is the link for you guys to check out New Look Lashes. Um, remember, these are the magnetic lashes. If you if your eyelash has been falling out from the other stuff, I'll let your girl. I'm going to let Sheila um, tell you about it once more. Um, <clears throat> before, 
we log off. And if anybody has a question, you can put it in the comments while Ms. Sheila is, is sharing more about her, her business. Um, like I said, it is a magnetic liner. It's magnetized. You put the line on your, did we lose each other? Okay. I was trying to put you on by yourself. Okay. I was trying to put you on by yourself. And, and in each packet, we have the directions on the back. I don't know if you can see this. And basically tells you how to do it. You just take the line, line your eye on top of your eyelid. Come on. The very top. Put the line on. You put one line on. Wait about two to three minutes. Put your second one on. Wait two or three minutes. And you take the lashes. All the lashes have five magnets. I started out with three. And you have one here, one here, one in the middle, and then two there. And you just take the, the lash and it just snaps right on to the liner. You don't have to do any work. Once you latch it on, it goes all the way across. And it has a storing kit. And you can see how it latches onto the storage kit. And that's how it latches, latches, latches on here. Let me pop one off and pop it back on. See how it goes right on? That's it. And it's easy. You pop it off, put it right back in your kit, and you start over the next day. Wash your face. With just I do a lay face wash. You can do the same thing, or just your regular face wash or makeup remover to take it off. And you and you got your case again. Well, you can pick up some of our beautiful glasses too. We have a whole, a lot of different kinds. This is another pair I have. Cute. We have some darker ones. Mm hmm. And we even have cases to store your glasses in. We have the white. We have the gold. Oh, that's cute. And we have the famous black. And it has new look glasses with tail. And we even have a line for men now. Um, all the men was telling me that I was forgetting about them. So I got some glasses for the men also. Do you have any of those with, you know, right now that beside you that you could show them for the men? I don't. I thought I had some. But no, I don't have any. I was unprepared. Alfonso. Alfonso? No, nobody's here to bring me a pair. If you would give me one second, I can grab a pair. Yes. Give me one second. We're on our own lives. <laughs> okay. <laughs> guys, anybody have any questions? She's going to um, show you guys an example. So it's New Look Lashes and Glasses. Um, her, um, when she was producing it with the chemist and the design, she made sure that they went back and did a slightly more uh, defined curl for those of you who wear glasses and you worry about your lashes because normally, you know, they touch the screen. Uh, one of the biggest things that really attracted me to wanting to help her, um, well, several things, but one of them was when she mentioned how she felt about the women who were losing their lashes. And so we normally have a story or something that really aligns us to the work that we do. And um, that was huge for me that, you know, it had a purpose outside of just making money because we're going to make the corn. OK. OK. I have <laughs> the story behind it was major. These are some frames for the men. I see my husband sometime. Mm -hmm. I like the blue. And, and we have, again, our name. I don't know if you can see it. There it is on it. And then here's another pair that I have for the men. Mm -hmm. And it has our name on that also. I don't know which side it's on. Right there. I guess you can see it right there. That's how these look. So we have something for the men for the women. So when you are, <clears throat> so you have, they can order them online. 
They can actually come to a physical location and, and be serviced by one of your trained lash techs, right? And if they're so, purchasing their first kit, they can also purchase refills, is that correct? Correct, we have um, refills also. I have one that's walked away from it. And so you can buy just the individual um, lashes. If you already have your kit, you can use the liner um, with all of them. And then we have the individual packages where you can just get those. It doesn't come with the liner. And then all of them have the directions on the back. Oh, okay. So for those who have already purchased their kit, if they're just getting another set of lashes, that's the lash case and lashes mm -hmm. refill. Mm -hmm. Um, will come in. Oh, and the little mirror. That's cute. Mm -hmm. And you can just buy the liner by itself if you run out of the liner because I've had some people that they wear there so much that they just needed a liner. So you can come back in and just get a liner. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So if you guys have no more questions for us, um, thank you so much again, Sheila, for gracing um, my audience and your audience, hopefully some of your, um, which I should have tagged you in this, but I'm still learning this uh, stream yard, but I, I'll go back and tag. It lets me do all of that when we actually um, okay. log off as well. But um, thank you so much for coming on and thank you guys for joining us. You guys didn't have any more questions. We are going to log out. Thank you for joining. This is normally a uh, build with Tanya, but this is behind the brand segment. So every now and then I bring on one of my clients, highlight their business, let you guys kind of hear their journey and then hear how we work together as a team. Um, just kind of supporting them in their biz business with their vision. You guys are absolutely amazing. And always remember you can be great and still need help. Okay. And I'm here. Thank you. Bye-bye.